In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, in today's Gospel, the Evangelist Mark is presented our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ after being obedient to his parents, his earthly parents. For 30 years, he finally leaves the shallow waters and comes to the deep waters of Jordan. He is coming to the Jordan River where he founds his relative, John the Baptizer. John was preaching the word of repentance, the mystery of repentance. And the Jewish would come to him to be baptized with the baptism of John, which was for the cleansing of soul and body wasn't the baptism that we receive today, but just was for the remission of sins. And to him were coming people from different areas. Soldiers, Pharisees, and simple people. But there was something else. The king of Israel, Herod, would uh, come sometimes and John will charge him, being very strict. And what was the problem? The problem was that he illegally divorced his wife, his legal wife, and took the wife of his brother, Philip. And he was living with her in sin. And John just was pointing, you, being the king, you have to be, to be an example and first to obey to the law. Right? But not only that you're not obeying to the law, but you're living in sin with this woman that she is not supposed to be with you because the law was saying that if the brother is dying without offsprings, he shouldn't she shouldn't ma uh, marry a stranger, but his brother to raise the offspring for his brother and give the name of the brother. But his, his brother was alive and he had with her a daughter already, all right? So this wasn't the case. He was just committing adultery. And that's why he was charging him because as the king, he wasn't living accordingly. And you see, like in the case of David, when he sinned and killed his general, Ori, and took his wife, and when prophet Nathan came and charged him, he repented. He said, Lord, I sinned against you. And he repented bitterly. But this, he was arrogant. He wanted to kill him, but it was an impediment. He was afraid of the people. Not of God of, or any, anything else, but the people because the people deeply, highly respected John the baptizer. So 
and he was afraid of sort of revolution. He didn't want anything like that to, to happen. So, and from the other side, she was poking his eyes, right? Hey, you're a king or what? You're a man or what? Is this son of Zechariah charging you and you're saying nothing? Come on, do something. But because he didn't want any kind of problem with the people, he was being silent and waiting for the right moment. In the meantime, Jesus came to be baptized. So now, let, let us think a little bit. The Son of God, the one that was with God before everything was created, is taking flesh, the one without sin. Because as I mentioned in the beginning, that bapt baptism was for the remission of sins. So then what was the point of him coming to be baptized if he did not have sins? And here, the answer we are receiving from the prophet Isaiah, that he took upon his shoulders our sins. So everybody would come to be baptized and leave their sins in the water of Jordan. And he came and lifted up upon his shoulders all those sins. And he cleans the water in us through his baptism. Because he did not he didn't need it, but he wanted to clean to cleanse us. So that that was the reason of his baptism, of approaching, because we know John was wait, 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 I can't do it. Like how can I put my hands on my creator? You are the, my creator. Because he recognized him from his mother's womb. Remember when Mary went to visit Elizabeth, his mother. The baby lived in her womb from joy. Seeing the mother of God. And she was already pregnant with Jesus Christ. So he already being in the womb of his mother. He had that connection. Because that was the purpose of him to come to prepare the way of the Lord. So, and when he was dumped in the water, the Holy Trinity revealed, the epiphany of the Holy Trinity was revealed to humanity because John saw the Holy Spirit in a form of a dog, which is peace and redemption, the symbol of peace and redemption, right? And he heard the voice of Father from on high. You are my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased, all right? So we are having the son taking upon his shoulders the sins of the humanity. We have the, the dove, the Holy Spirit, the symbol of peace because that was, that was the reason of him to come to bring peace to us, to redeem us from the slavery and to give us the peace, the divine peace. All right? So, and the confirmation of God the Father. And as soon as he came up from the water, he was driven by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness where he spent 40 days in prayer and fasting, being tempted by the devil. The wild beast joined, joined him, and the angels were serving him. So the evil one came to tempt him. And we, re we remember all those Temptations that he is bringing. So, oh, after imagine now being in the wilderness without water and food for 40 days, just 
st staying in a nice cool room and not eating and drinking 40 days, you're going to be pretty much drained, right? But now imagine in the heat of the day, in the wilderness, in the desert, it's very tough. Probably a normal person would not survive more, more than a week in that environment. 40 days. And now, being in that situation, the devil comes, oh, if you're the son of God, come on, make these, these stones bread. You're hungry, so make it. You see, the temptation. And how many times when we are making a decision, we want to come to do something, he's tempting you. Either, I don't know, someone is visiting you and you feel that you know you have to break the fast or whatever, or not to go to church because you have visitors, right? So you, you have to please them, right? So, uh, and many, many things like this. But you see, he was stable, showing the human nature, the strength of the human nature, because he didn't act as the son of God there. He act as the son of man, because he was fully God and fully man. So he showed the strength of the human character when he, when a man obeys to God and his commandments. But when we, when we are disobeying to God and his commandments, we are becoming vulnerable. We are becoming weak. And yes, we cannot take it because we have other priorities. But he's showing us the strength that is given to us from God. It's a big virtue. It's a big virtue that we have, but we're not using it. And so, all these things, and after coming from there, by that time, John was put in jail. Because, as I said, he didn't want to kill him because he was afraid. He wanted, but he couldn't because he was afraid. But he got hold of him, and he put him in jail. And now, a big chance was his birthday. And of course, as the king, he invited all the big shots of his time, right? That was the high priest. There was probably the generals of the Roman army and probably Pilate himself and all, all the, the crew that you can imagine. So now imagine, what was there? Food of all kinds drink of all kinds, right? And on top of it, the cherry, the cherry on the cake, Herodiada's daughter came with that perverse dance. So in order to make Herod to promise even half of his kingdom, so that means that he sh she showed everything she could show, right? In order to to bring him to that situation, to lose his mind completely. So you see, food, drink, dance, and we are losing completely our sense, and we are becoming vulnerable and exposed to all kinds of sins. That's why we shall control ourselves, how much we eat and how much we drink. The church is allowing the food and the drink, but it, we have, everything has limits, right? But when we exceed the limits, we are losing the control completely, and we are becoming slaves of the sin and of the evil one. And this is what happened there. Because he already was enslaved by the, by, by, by the woman he was living with, and now, through the death of his daughter, because she taught her daughter, right? She already being perverse, taught her daughter the same thing, to be perverse. And 
not only him, but probably the entire assembly of those that were present there lost their minds. And when he promised that he would give her anything she, she would ask, even the half of his kingdom, as a young stupid girl, she went to her mother, of course, the teacher, right? And she advised her to ask for the head of John the baptizer on the platter. See, while they were bringing, bringing different kind of platters with different kind of food and jars with wine and different other drinks, she is asking to bring the, the head of the most holy man on earth. Because even Jesus said that he is the greater man that ever lived on earth. You see what she did. And you see what the exceeded food and drink can do. That's why the church and the Holy Father is, is, is teaching us to abstain. To learn abstention. Because imagine, and we know from our own experience, when we are fasting, when we are practicing the fasting, you know, you control your thoughts, you control your mind, right? Better, much better, thousand much better. But when you're full, oh, you got a drink, and there comes the second one, and you watch something, and you're starting discussing, talking weird things, and there you go. You get to judging, criticizing, and whoever knows, and many other things that can occur, right? That's why it's important that, to keep the abstinence. As Aristotelus was saying, everything is good with measure. Pan metron Ariston. But when we are losing the measure, then the catastrophe comes in our life. <clears throat> so, did this girl, because she could say, wait, wait a minute, it's my decision. Why should I do what you're asking? So first of all, she, she didn't have the strength to stand her position, right? Easy going. And, and that's a, a very dangerous and sin, sinful statement. The king and those that were there, right? All right, you promised, but it's something that cannot be accomplished. So now you want to show, to show that you're a man in this situation? He wants to show that you're a man. He didn't show that before, but now because he was drunk from the the wine and whatever else he drank there over there, and he was drunk from her dance, right? Pretty much under the like, hypnotize. Okay, so he lost the control. But those that was were there which was probably the high priest and other Pharisees, the teachers of the law, why didn't they stop this situation? Wait, come on, okay. It's too much now. Let's stop this. No one said a thing. So, and this is what is happening in our old time. We are seeing all these things and we are we're, we're not saying anything. We're fine with every, everything. Right, so you do you see that we, we are becoming part of the big problem? So, and that's another reason that the Orthodox Church is teaching us to celebrate the name day because of that event, of that birthday party that killed. And not only him, but from the Abel, the first, sons, first son of Adam and Eve, to the Zachariah, the son, the, the prophet, 
that was killed in between the altar, right? So how many, like all, the, the, all this blood of the righteous ones was shed. And John the baptizer is the, is, is the last prophet. And on top of it, Jesus Christ is crucified. So you see, these men, these people, they, they had no connection with God and they had no conscience. They, they were living completely in sin and enslaved to the evil forces. And unfortunately, in, in our times, we are doing the same, the same thing because our priority is to live, have good time, right? Good vacation, spend a lot of money on unuseful things, and so on and so forth. Let us take example, my dear ones, from this gospel, from, from John the baptizer. Let us take example from the apostles that they left everything behind and they followed Christ. Because which each one of us and everyone and everybody is called to follow Christ. Let us follow Christ and become the children of light. Amen. God bless you all.